Hi, it's Manesh Patel from Duke University here at the Heart.org booth at the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions in 2011. And I have the pleasure of talking to a colleague of mine, Ken Mahaffey, today. Ken, thanks for joining us. Ah, terrific to be here. Thanks. Ken, uh, we're talking about the Tracer trial that you presented as a late breaker here. Can you tell us a little bit about what led to the design of the trial and what you guys were hoping to accomplish? Yeah, so obviously our patients with acute coronary syndrome still have a lot of uh, morbidity and mortality, so we're looking for new agents. And one of the uh, promising targets is uh, um, the PAR1 and PAR4 receptors on the surface. These are receptors that, uh, are st- um, that thrombin attaches to, activates platelets. And borapaxar is an agent that uh, blocks PAR1, um, blocks it really well, and hopeful would lead to uh, improved outcomes. So tell us a little bit about what the trial design was and what you guys found. Right. So it was a large, simple trial, ruled high-risk patients with acute coronary syndromes, and then randomized them to borapaxar or placebo on the background of standard of care, which was really aggressive dual antiplatelet therapy. A lot of aspirin, a lot of thionopyridine for a, an extended period of time during the trial. How long did the trial go, and tell us about the findings. Sure. Well, patients uh, were followed for a little over 500 days. Wow. Long, long-term long follow-up. As you well know from your rocket experience, there's been uh, a trend here to be studying these therapies for much longer periods of time, which I think is good. Um, and patients were treated for just under 400 days. Wow. Um, so really good exposure to the drug and, uh, and, and then long-term follow-up for ascertainment of adverse events and clinical endpoint events. So what did you guys find? Well, we found that there was a modest reduction in the uh, primary efficacy endpoint. It was a compositive cardiovascular death, MI, stroke, urgent revascularization or hospitalization for ischemia. It, uh, it was about a 9 to 10% relative reduction in the hazard for that uh, quintuple composite with a p-value of 0.072, so it did not meet statistical significance. So what next? Do you think we're going to do more with the compound? Do you think this is going to be the end of the development cycle? I think there's a little bit more. Um, we saw some intriguing efficacy in, uh, in spontaneous myocardial infarctions, an absolute 1.4% reduction. The problem with uh, the trial and what we're all thinking about quite extensively right now is there was more bleeding with Vorapaxar, more gusto major bleeding, Timmy major bleeding, or gusto severe bleeding, Timmy major bleeding, and even intracranial hemorrhage. Three and a half fold uh, increase in the hazard p-value of 0.001. So uh, even though it was a low frequency of intracranial hemorrhage, it's uh, concerning and we need to understand that bleeding better. I think there's some hope here because uh, there is uh, some interesting interactions that we observed with vorapaxar in a thionopyridine subgroup when patients were not on a thionopyridine at baseline and uh, were randomized to uh, vorapaxar, there seemed to be less of a hazard of bleeding and maybe a hint of a, le- a uh, more pronounced efficacy. So many of us are thinking, are we just adding too many therapies onto our patients? And do we either need to be radically decreasing the dosages of these drugs or maybe starting to take away some therapies that we've been using for decades like aspirin yeah. or even a thionopyridine? So, Lots more to think about. We have a lot of good data to uh, analyze, and we'll hope uh, hope when we see the results of TRA 2P Timmy 50, mm-hmm. a large trial in a chronic population. When we see the results of that, we may be able to start putting this all together and decide on a path forward. Thanks. Well, thanks so much for bringing the science forward to us. Great. Thanks for having me.